Aloha, we're here with Dr. Kevin Davison at the Maui Rejuvi Rejuvi Regenerative, Regenerative, Regenerative Medicine. Medicine. Yeah. Maui Regenerative Medicine, I love that name, and you're in such a gorgeous space. Mind if we show real quick the view that you have? That's just part of what, wow. You it's have a, a, a very, window. yeah, that's a blessed life right there. So, um, I think it's blessed just to be able to live in Hawaii. But I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So what do you do? Uh, we're, with this uh, interview, what do you think is the most powerful areas that people can do for regeneration and uh, like so, revitalizing yeah. themselves? Okay. So I'm going to take a really specific uh, or I'd say a really focused approach Yeah. because that's kind of what I do. Um, I focus on people who need alternatives to surgical intervention for orthopedic problems. So if you had a meniscus tear, or you had a neck issue that you have a disc issue, or a facet issue, or you have a lumbar spine issue, all those things generally people go to their orthopedist to get surgical consults or steroid consults, right? right. Just to kind of get their, their symptoms under control. So what I've been working on for last 20 years plus is trying to find the best ways to naturally um, regenerate the tissue instead of removing the tissue. So if you have a torn meniscus in your knee, most people think, oh, we get meniscus surgery, and what they do is you just carve out the pieces that are damaged and or sew some things down or tack them down or do something to get rid of the pain. But the, the problem is, is that you need all that tissue. So the more you get rid of, uh, the less your body has to work. And so I, I do nutritional approaches, I do injection approaches, uh, I do uh, metabolic approaches to help people regenerate connective tissue. So that would be for all the spine things and all the joints in the body. So that's hormones and what else? Well, mostly what I specialize in is orthobiologics, which means basically orthos, orthopedics, and biologics means you're taking biological tissue, which can be from you, like your blood has platelets in it, and you take these platelets, concentrate them, and put those in the area where the damage is, because your body can't get it there in enough quantity. Or we can get it from an allograph. And an allograph would be from uh, you know, human sources, but they're, they're essentially vetted and they're prepared for uh, treating other people but with uh, what we call their perinatal sources. So that means uh, from placentas and umbilical cords. And like those, stem cells. Like stem cells. Okay, stem cells only come from umbilical cords. And the companies we use use very high level and you know, probably the most vital, I would say vital, vital components. And those are coming from people who are healthy to be, begin with, meaning they have to actually go through a, a lot of analysis to make sure they pass, and then they get into a place where they're stored, and then the, we take them and we store them, or we just have them delivered just for the particular patient. And so this is, I've been working with this, these products for the last probably 10 years, uh, and prior to that, we were extracting stem cells from people's fat or their bone marrow and using those. But as you know, as you get older, your stem cells get less vital. And the content become, that grows them decreases. Exactly. And the bone marrow. It, well, yeah. And also inside the cell itself are something called exosomes. Have you heard of those, that term? Yeah. Okay. And exosomes are essentially what does the healing. So those exosome quality starts to go down as you get older. So your numbers of stem cells get smaller and the actual functional ability of the cells get less. So if you can take something from a brand new placenta or umbilical cord that's been, you know, basically medically prepared so that it's ready for transplant, let's call it, it's, it's a very large source. And we, we've been doing it for, for many years and we have good relationships with biotech companies that specialize in this. Have to nowadays with all the the known dangers that have to be checked off and so yeah. how, that's that's not cheap, but would you say that's the most powerful regenerative one single thing that you've ever seen is the stem cell therapy? 
Absolutely, for, for especially for what I'm talking about. You know? And like, have you ever seen a ligament that was completely severed and yet reattached with the help of the stem cells? Um, not completely severed. You still have to have some place where they're, they're actually connected. You've never seen it actually bridge the gap with um, the stem cells? I mean, pretty close, but they have to be in proximity, you know, so they're right there. But most of the time, I'll tell people that, you know, say for instance, an ACL tear. That's the, you know, ACL is right mm -hmm. So they're crossed and they're, they span a, the, the whole joint. ACL, ACL, right. left knee. Exactly. Like that. And they, they span the whole joint complex. Yep. And they get stretched to the point where there's a very little piece left, but it's still not completely separate. Or it's, it's what we call uh, it's a partial thickness tear. And those respond really well. Um, I was actually told that I had a complete tear over 30 years ago, ripped a piece of bone out of the bottom of the femur, and was T-boned by a wave runner while I was sitting on one. Both of them were totaled with my knee in between them. Lateral damage and yeah. the PCL mainly ripped out. And then one of the top orthopedic surgeons in the city of Utah, Richard T. Jackson, said it was never reattached without surgery. But um, I knew that I had white blood cells and lymphocytes in my blood, and I knew that they come from the stem cells, and I knew there had to be a way to produce them. Yeah. And uh, I took my petition to God and was shown some extra things that I hadn't yeah. seen before, yeah. and I, I applied it, and evidently it reattached. It well, reattached good. pretty fast. There's like a lot of different approaches, and things happen that you can't really explain scientifically always. Right? I've learned a lot of things that produce our stem cells, and I think... Um, that not one thing replaces another. And I think mostly it's a dormant ability, unless you really know how to unlock the door and really open that floodgate. Then uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of miracles. What's like maybe one of the biggest miracles you've ever seen? Well, you know, this was kind of, I don't know, several years ago, and I started, after using these for probably three or four years, um, we had a woman who came in and she's, uh, she's a professional uh, volleyball player. In her earlier years, and now she was in her 50s, and she tore it playing pickleball. And it was an Achilles tendon. And um, I've got in my web, on my website there's a picture, and it's basically held together by a few strands. And the rest is just the fluid inside of the sheet of that Achilles. So her Achilles was badly damaged. Mm. And I just, you know, part of me said, I really don't want to do this because it's it's one of those things where they surgically think it's me. It's not a very good surgery. It's very difficult to recover from high incidence of infection. So there was a good reason for me to say, you know what, I'll do this as long as you do one thing. And that one thing was she had to stay off of it, so keep it in a food for two months and use crutches for that time. And so I did the procedure. That food also designed to help pull the inflammation out? Or yeah, because yeah, you're just not using that. And so when she came back after two months, and I, I ultrasounded, I used uh, what we call MSK ultrasound. Um, I was really, really impressed because of what had happened. It just, the tissue completely regenerated in there. There was only a small area where there was a little bit of fluid. And so my second approach was just to do a booster to keep those stem cells alive for another couple of weeks or months or whatever. In this case, I wanted to see her in a few weeks. And after that, it was just almost completely repaired. So that was one of those things that was right like, oh, this is really powerful. But up to that point, I've been using them quite a bit with, with really good results, but really hadn't seen, you know, like some uh, visual like that where it was before and after. Have you ever used them for the brain? Uh, not specifically, like, like for fresh concussions. Fresh injury, like right and left hemisphere neurons torn? No, they no. Connect them. That's really hard to assess and evaluate. There's a lot, a lot going on there. Um, we do use exosomes for um, just you know, getting it to the blood-brain barrier. And exosomes, if you don't know what those are, they're basically what's inside of the stem cell that does the work. And they're constantly being generated by stem cells, and there are trillions of them. So when you get a, 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 an exosome treatment, you're getting essentially the mechanics of the stem cell itself without the outside layer of it. So it's a really safe wow. way to do an IV administration of stem cells because they can't create a clot. You can't have problems with, with 
I'm pretty familiar with cost of stem cell technologies out there too. And what do you guys charge for that here? Typically? You know, I don't like to, you know, because it's really, really, um, you can get nothing it. like a heart transplant. Well, no. that's like six, no, you're 1. Talking 6 probably million, a couple of thousand dollars for a really, really full uh, knee evaluation and treatment, etc. And that would be using stem cells along with what we call cytokines. So that's really important. So we're, we're wow. trying to keep it down into that range, at least you know, two to four thousand. Hospitals typically about. charge between five and fifty. No, I know. So, I know. And I think they're the most powerful regeneration cells in the body. So it depends yeah. on. You know. Yeah, and we've been, you know, we try to keep it really reasonable and within the grasp of a lot of people because they're not insurance reimbursable, as you know. So. Um, main thing is, I just want people to be really um, happy with their results. Um, they feel like what they've done is been worth you know, the research they put into it, the money they put into it, and it's an investment. And that's what they have to realize: is that all these things that you do that isn't covered by insurance, that is sort of you've discovered it and you've found it, and it's it's basically an investment in your health. And people kind of forget that, and they think the insurance companies are charging you out. That's not the case, as you know. We've got to be good about our diet, our nutrition, our, our focus, our exercise, our you know, inner exercise, our Qigong therapy. We, that's a thing I advocate quite a bit and I have as a, as a rehab for, for our, our patients. Mind if we talk about a little bit different sure. area just to ask you? Like, uh, I know people have done intravenous injections with like glutathione mm -hmm. also. Do you think that that is the best approach when it comes to helping the body, you know, have glutathione access anymore? Or? There's a lot of things that will actually increase your glutathione without putting glutathione. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I would want to know what you, what some of those things are, what you could say about that now. Well, from your experience. You know, there's 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 a lot of nutraceuticals that will, will help. With that. Like nutrigenomics, nutraceuticals. Yeah. 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 So like nerf 2 activation. Nerf 2 activation could be good. Um, you know, there's, as I said, there's a, a lot of uh, just precursors to it. Yeah. Because glutathione itself is really, it's got a very short half, short half life. So even if you, you've got it in suspension, no. and it's in a, in a, you know, say, let's say in a liquid form, it, you know, we used to give it a lot of IV. For building and production, because that's basically what it's doing. And Dr. Perlmutter, yeah, he's Dr. known Perlmutter, for he's a friend with so Parkinson's Institute. Yeah. What it does for that, like immediately, is, yeah. it's been pretty profound. But he's also been an advocate of some of the other nutraceutical approaches, like um, like nerf 2 activation, since that came out. Yeah. What do you think about the idea that? There's a like 5,000 LED light panel analogy that I like to use in the nucleus of our cells that represent all the survival genes, the disease mechanism genes, the, the 30 super antioxidant enzymes, less than 1% of that, as well as the 36 cytokines and all the different proteins that do different things. There being a maintenance man that gets held outside the nucleus, can't go to work in that vault where all those, where that LED panel is more and more after the age of 20, typically. Yeah that we learn how to flip a few switches and get it to go back in, so all that can restore 5,000 ways, restore functionality in our, yeah. in our cells, cellular physiology being the basis of all physiology and functionality. And what's the most important part of the cell? I think that uh, it depends on how you look at it, because it can't, not can work. work. What produces but the sodium energy? potassium pump that well, generates that's the power right. for, and the ATP and, glute and uh, glycogen that's made out of a ton of ATP that's created in the mitochondria. And that's it. That's so, the component that's the most important part of the cell. And if you can't increase yeah. that, that comp of you know, essentially creating ATP, mm -hmm. then you're not going to generate more energy. And what, yeah. then, what creates those, uh, what's called the electron transport system? That's what the stem cell is. It, it, it has microRNA. And those, that RNA will go in and actually repair anything in the mitochondria that's not functioning properly. So you get a tremendous amount of uh, 
of mileage out of that one. So that's one of the reasons we have people do, right? Excellent. Have yeah. to do exosome infusions that that just pumps up all the mitochondria, and we're we're saying like we do that for some people three to four times a year, and they're like just you know, like great. What about the hormone side of the equation? This is another big branch. Yeah. Um, what do you recommend? Well, I recommend that you know obviously women have already been you know appraised in this world, and they're always they're giving um, you know estrogen replacement therapy, etc. Uh, I think what's, what's been left out are men. So men do not have their their hormones assessed. They don't have the, the uh, bioidenticals like women do. We, we need to do that. We need to assess not only just testosterone, but there's a whole slew of other hormone analogs that help this body, this system keep up. And, and men need it it's just as just a use of it, or maybe both. Are you familiar with how long doctors have been saying high intensity exercise for oh, the hormones? Absolutely. Yeah. Are you familiar with the BFR technology, what no. the KC Chiefs have been using no. lately? Their trainer is the premier trainer for the NFL. And really, the modern science on it started about 70 years ago in Japan. That so what technology. Is I don't really like the word, but blood flow resistance training, it's um, really counterintuitive to me. Yeah. I came up with another one, ROR, which is just as counterintuitive, but it's more fun. It's rapid oxygen reduction because it makes you roar like okay. a lion or lioness, yeah, yeah. faster and easier than anything. There is a new design they came out with right before COVID. They tried to launch, but they couldn't because of all the lockdowns. They had to wait till after. But it's the multi-air chamber it makes it so we don't get a increase of arterial pressure or send it back pressure to the heart. So it's the only design that's past that safety aspect because all the others are basic tourniquet designs that do increase arterial pressure, send back pressure to the heart. Yeah. And now we don't have to worry about that. Well, um, the strong science, I've, been at, I've taken a three day crash course with a guy named Dr. Mike DeBoard who's the president of B3 Sciences and he says, you got to dip below 30% oxygen to working muscles. And it doesn't do that to the internal organs. The brain is actually increasing because as soon as you get any kind of muscle failure, you're releasing the nitric oxide, glycogen, because that's the fuel for fast switch activity, and that's what you have to do to get the fast switch activity. And the more the chemistry sees the, the chemistry of the brain, the more it sees the chemistry of muscle failure, the more you go into what's called the burn, the more it sees this chemistry. 30 minutes later, it sends a signal to pituitary to start cranking out the hormones. Mm -hmm. But we get a full cocktail, unlike bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. So I'm happy to give you a, a, some information on that. Introduce you to Dr. Mike before he's taken the biggest dive into the science on that. Maybe I don't. He's just a chiropractor, but he's taken a yeah. real there's dive a into the science on it. There's a lot. There's, a, there's every day. There's new, new steps. Eight years. Like 80 year olds getting a hormone release from a 10 minute walk. Yeah. Yeah. What, what well, you he want? was taking that thing. I'm going to start the clock from the start of the mental league, but I'm going to. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. No, we're, we're good here. So, I appreciate your time. I'm yeah. surprised we had this much of it. I thought we only yeah, had well, five minutes. I thought minutes. the patients would be here. Anyway, great to I meet you. appreciate you. Yeah. All right. Kevin Davidson, right? Yes. Thank and you. And your first name is? Ezra. Well, Ezra. I go by my middle name, Ezra. Okay. My first name that made it to the birth certificate. Stephen. Okay, Stephen. West, uh, right? Yes. Okay. Thank well, you. Thanks Kevin. for coming by and 